Hello, welcome to the Breck Buzz, a show that's going to be telling you all about what's been happening last month at the Town of Breckenridge Town Council. And I'd like to welcome one of our newest members to the Town Council and her first Breck Buzz, Councilwoman Erin Giello. Welcome. Thank you. And uh, we have Mark Burke with us, a senior council member uh, who's also Mayor Prent Pro Tem uh, oh, this geez. year. Uh, so, uh, and Mark's here and Erin to help us talk a little bit about some of the stuff that's been happening. Probably the biggest thing is the council held its spring retreat, as we call it. And this is an opportunity where the council talks about some of the capital improvements, some of the goals, some of the policies. So I'm gonna have each of you give, give us a few minutes of what you took from it. So Mark, you wanna kick it off as uh, the senior yeah. council member? <laughs> you know, uh, the first part of the retreat was, uh, you know, it's always great for a refresher and for new council people to uh, get a budget review and, and to go over our fund balances. Uh, so to me, you know, as, even though I've been on the council now for four years, it was, it was really important to hear what we've done. We, we are completing a significant amount of capital projects, so it certainly, you know, is a good eye-opener for us to review our fund, fund balances. Uh, the town is in great shape uh, financially. Uh, you know, the staff obviously is holding down costs. Revenue is at an all-time high uh, right now, so we're in good shape. Uh, but we decided to uh, slow down a little bit of the uh, construction projects like that we've been doing over the last three years. Let us get complete with some of these projects, although it didn't stop us from doing some new things, <laughs> uh, as usual. Uh, but for me, that was probably the biggest highlight, I think, was, was to really go through the fund balances. Um, you know, with the, uh, uh, I think it's about $35 million in restricted funds that we have, council and mandatory uh, fund balances. And that kind of left us a little over $11 million. Uh, but with that said, what we tried to do, and I, I think we accomplished pretty much, uh, is that we tried to keep our spending as to uh, the RET, the real estate transfer tax, which is about $4 million going to be this year. So we don't have to touch our fund balances. I think we may have gone over that a little bit, Tim. Always, right? Always a little bit. That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Aaron, your first retreat, uh, what were some of the takeaways and some of the highlights for, for you? Oh, it was very interesting. I. Uh, it's great to see exactly how the budget works, what the parameters that we have to work within, and, and also the studies. We had the F-Lot parking study, we had um, the Performing Arts Feasibility Study, the per parking survey. So it was a great uh, baseline to see where, where the town is right now and where we can improve, and obviously the, the dollar amounts that we can improve within. So the theme that I caught a little bit of was parking, transit, yeah. and parking structures. So why don't yes. we go into that just a little bit, just so the public has a little bit idea of what kind of came out of that discussion. And the big one was the F-Lot, I mean, and, and, right. and not cheap either. No, <laughs> no, and that's, yeah. Well, there were three different options that were presented. One where there were two um, underground levels and um, a, a ground level. And then there was a second where there were two above ground levels um, and then three above ground levels along with those two below ground levels. Um, and it was, it was interesting to see the cost and the next step would be to see if we really want to move forward with one, one of these options and how we would fund it. But uh, the, it, they're beautiful plans. Uh, it would create a, a little bit of an area to put in the new Paley artwork that we commissioned and just it, it would be it would be a great place to put a good amount of people who would want to use Main Street and we've seen that about 50% of people who park in Main, at F lots use Main Street so so that's it's pretty good and, and Mark I've spin off of that there was a survey of users and there was the theater Right. which kind of fitted into the whole thing, which is the original uh, Breckman Theater now, which the backstage uses, where we were looking at some options there. How did that all fit together with this whole parking discussion on the F-Lot? Well, you know, it's interesting. <clears throat> you know, there, there is, a, there is a, an issue with parking in this town, but there's, a, you know, probably uh, when you look at the survey, there's a, there's a real perception of an issue with parking in the town, and, and a lot of it is, is the locals. I mean, I, I think it was, the number was 85% of our locals, first of all, drive to work. Um, and so that, you know, that puts a strain on parking and, you know, and I may be, you know, oversimplifying it, but basically they take the prime spots um, and that was self-reported through the surveys. I mean, locals actually said that they prefer to park right on Main Street, right in front of their businesses, you know, and, and I can understand that's human nature, but that's creating an issue for our consumer, consumers, which are our visitors and our guests. 
And, you know, as a result of that, it, it's kind of forced our hand. This has been ongoing since I've been on the council, Tim, probably long before me. Um, but that's what really sparked this study uh, for the F-Lot. You know, it's, it's one of the largest single spaces we have as a town that we currently own that's in the downtown core area. But it comes at a high price tag. So we have got to think about it as a town, you know, long and think clearly. And our citizens need to understand the cost that's going to be involved in this. Because as Aaron said, there were three plans. They range anywhere from 600 spaces to nearly 1,100 spaces uh, with a price tag of 40 to $60 million. I think the debt service alone was like $2.8 million a year just to pay for it. And it wasn't just uh, the parking structure. In order to accommodate that many more cars coming to one location, we would have to redo uh, uh, Park Avenue. We would have to, in one case, have to actually make it four lanes. Uh, but in, in all three cases, we'd have to make sure the roundabouts were done in four o'clock and Village Road. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, there are significant infrastructure changes that the town will have to make in order to accommodate that. Now, the study did say that to consolidate parking makes it much easier for guests because, in fact, they know where to find it. Right now, where we have satellite lots all over the town, although it adds to the character of the town, it's frustrating for visitors because right now when they get to a lot, if they get to Wellington and they find it and it's full, they now have to find another place to park. So it's, it's going to be a big discussion. I hope the community comes out because we have to figure out a way to finance it if we're going to do it. Uh, and I think Aaron would agree when we ran for council, it was a big issue parking, mm -hmm. but it comes at a price tag and someone's going to have to pay for it. Uh, so that's going to be probably the largest discussion. Right. In the survey, I always love, love, love the people are very honest because yeah. uh, as, as Mark indicated, locals want it free and close to where they work. That's right. And yes. it doesn't work if, if that's what they want as compared to what our guests want. Right, a right. challenge for council, huh? Exactly. And it was interesting to see from the parking study that the majority of visitors wanted to park in the gondola lots. But I wonder if that's because it's obvious. When you're driving by the gondola yeah. lots, you know that that's a, an easy place to park. You know where your car is, you can get to it and get out. And that's and you see the lift taking you right up the back. Exactly. You know where you want to go, which similarly, I don't think it would be that, that much different with, with an F-Lot parking structure. Tim, if I could uh, just throw out one thing that I think is important for our citizens to know that the F-Lot study in the survey, not as a parking structure, but currently, the people who do park there seem to spend more time downtown afterwards shopping. I think it was till 7 o'clock where mm. many of the other lots, they left at 3 or 4 right. and they were out of here. But there was a good trend where we were seeing a few that's more right, of exactly. them stay. Yep, that's right. Even in the, even in the gondola lot. In lots. the gondola lot. The mm -hmm. one out on uh, Airport Road, no. virtually none of them stay. And I'm not sure by us building enough parking downtown, people that come here just to ski for the day are going to stay anyway, right. because we've, we've tried a lot of uh, things to keep them here. Well, let, let's talk about a little bit of next steps. The council highlighted two things they wanted to do related, to, well, one to the, to the parking structure, mm -hmm. and that was to do more analysis financially, That's right. uh, figure out what, what is that, how, how to pay for it. And, and the second thing on the, uh, the, the, the survey and, and the uh, parking things was to finish up a summer piece. Mm -hmm. because we want to make sure that both those pieces are looked at as, as a part of the plan and then to come up with a plan. That's right. It's going to be very interesting. It Any will be. predictions yeah. of what that plan is going to be, Mark? Um, no, no, I, I, no, I, 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 I don't know, but I think that. the survey is going to show us that perhaps summer visitors are different than skier right. visitors. And I think a lot, of, we, we did discuss quite a bit about behaviors and what it takes to change that behavior if it's, you know, maybe driving your car less or... And, and taking the bus, walking, using transit, and people don't change very well. We, it also went over how uh, Shannon Haynes and I-70 tried to do the free after three, and uh, locals took to it very well, but guests didn't, didn't catch on quite or, as fast. Or didn't know about it. Or didn't know about right. it, right. yes. Right, yes. right, right. Because obviously I-70 was pretty locked up over the winter as well. Particularly this past winter, that yes. was a challenge. Yes. Uh, let's jump real quick into goals. Council talked about uh, updating their goals, and mm -hmm. we in fact uh, kept uh, some of the regular ones that we had, but we also added a few. Aaron, you want to take a crack at a couple of the ones that, that highlighted for you uh, for, the, for your coming year as a council member? Um, well, the, we changed 
For the goals last year, uh, we had arts and culture, but now it's instead of the infrastructure, because we've worked so hard on the arts district, now it's developing that programming, which of course Rob Wolf will work very hard on. Um, parking and transit came back, uh, turning the water conservation into, because we've obviously uh, put that into place, but working on the water plant and how we're going to pay for that. Um, and also improving communication stayed the same, but also focusing on the rec center and, and how we can improve there and continuing with the sustainable rec biz. And that's what I can remember. Yeah, that's pretty good, Mark. Yeah, one of the ones we added that I'm probably most excited about is the city market development project. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Um, and and that's, that's going to be something that will impact all of our citizens. You know, we've had debates about everything from the rec center, the ice rink, the golf course, childcare, housing, uh, that it helps certain areas. But every one of our citizens and our guests use the city market and that, you know, all the shops that are there. So we are committed as a council at least pursuing a redevelopment of that project, working with the current owner and seeing what it will take to redevelop that into a, a place that we can all be proud of and, and really feel good about, that our customers will appreciate, that our guests will appreciate and our citizens expect. So I'm pretty excited about that one. And that's actually been one talked about for quite a few years yep. also. Uh, so uh, if we could do the same thing with the post office, we would be... <laughs> if we only flip. had that kind of control, right? <laughs> right, <Yeah>. right. <laughs> well, great summary of the retreat. Uh, by the way, uh, we, we, we did take the retreat, so the public is certainly invited to, to join in. We had a few guests, which are always welcome. Uh, and so the council will continue to work uh, on the different aspects of what we did. Uh, we're going to be right back uh, after we take a quick break, and we're going to tell you about some of the other things that have been happening at the Breckenridge Town Council. Thank you. Hello. Welcome back to the Breck Buzz. Uh, continuing with our uh, updates on uh, some of the stuff the council's been working on, I'm going to jump into what we call development agreements. Uh, the council looked at two. I'm going to have each one of you take one. Uh, first, the BOEC. Uh, the Breckenridge Outdoor Education. Mark, you want to talk a little bit about that one? Yeah, the Breckenridge Outdoor Education Center has been leasing uh, their place on Wellington, which was formerly the Sanitation District building, I believe. Um, and they've been great stewards of it, but that building is getting old. And so I think, was it two years they first came to us looking to perhaps purchase that building? And the council at that time uh, said that we're willing to sell the building because we think that's a great use. But we really tried to convince them to try to think about long-term lease while they perhaps put together a fundraising campaign that would allow them to purchase the building. As a result of that, I think their board looked at it, and I don't want to speak for their board, so Tim, you might know even better, but their board looked at that project and that building needs a lot of repairs, I think to the tune of about $850,000. Mm -hmm. So they I wanted to come back to us with a development agreement where we would allow them to really renovate that building, change the facade so that in fact it would meet the neighborhood more compatible to the neighborhood, which is a, a great neighborhood. Uh, in addition to that, they want to add uh, dormers, I think, on the third floor, which would allow them to have seasonal housing for their employees, uh, so it'd be affordable housing for a workforce that they have. It is not going to be built so that it can be someday rented. It, it's going to be a, a dormitory style with an open kitchen and things like that, and there will be some nonprofit office space up there. Uh, but the council overwhelmingly approved it. We felt that it was the right thing. BOEC does so many great things for our community and for our visitors, and uh, we're really excited about it. They are going to embark as a result of us approving that. And by the way, they'll have to go through the planning commission, the same as any other project will. So it's not that you know we did a development agreement around the planning. They'll have to go to make sure it fits in the neighborhood and meets code and all those types of things. But it allows them to know that we're willing to make some exceptions for things that they needed to make sure that that would happen. Um, and so I think they're going to probably embark on a campaign of 1.25 million or something like or, that, or, which, more. Yeah. or more, which will include the 850,000 and the purchase price of 500,000. Right. And, and you know, we protected the town because that is our building, and I think right in the agreement. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. But if they, 20 years down the road, ever decided to sell, we have the first option to buy it back. That's correct. So it would not get into the wrong hands. So I felt really good about that. They do wonderful things for our community. Yeah, great partnership. Yeah. Second one was more of a classic development, development yes. agreement. <laughs> and we refer to this one as the Triumph Development. And what's that all about? Well, it's a Marriott Hotel uh, where the Breckenridge, Breckenridge Mountain Lodge 
was currently and the building's still there, but it's it's changing completely, changing it over into a Marriott, which I think is pretty exciting. They'll have 133 rooms, an outdoor pool uh, with, with beautiful amenities, and it'll be that four plus, hopefully, star uh, hotel that we've, we've kind of been looking for. I know we've been fishing around in the past to, with Flot, so hopefully this will be a, a great addition and it will bring business to that to that side of town. I'm secretly hoping that it will help out Main Street Station a bit. Yeah. That would be great, wouldn't it? Yeah. yeah. Get yeah. back some good commercial in there. Exactly. Uh, and that has to go through the planning process also. That this is, just yes. sets them up to, to start yeah. that process. And I believe we'll see more about that this Tuesday, correct? That's correct. Yeah. Right. Exactly yeah. right. Uh, Mark, one of the items that was on the retreat uh, topic that I kind of skipped over, and we probably ought to spend a couple minutes on, uh, the Breck Theater. Oh, and you yeah. actually looked at several options about uh, what to do with the what we call the classic old theater, which is what they're in right now, which the, the town owns in the Arts District, and some other options. Yeah, and that, that was a interesting debate. It's actually been a, several months that we've actually been looking at that. Uh, the, the previous council had already approved $1.3 million in renovations. Uh, to the backstage theater where it currently exists. As a result of that, uh, the council agreed uh, after that when we did the study, when we did more in-depth study of what's going to take, that it really got up to 1.9 million. So the council debated that uh, and we agreed to do a, a first phase of a, a survey or study. Does it make sense? And there were three options we looked at. Does it make sense to spend the 1.9 million where it currently exists and keep their home? Does it make sense to knock it down and rebuild there? Or does it make sense to completely forget that location, perhaps build a flex theater, flexible theater down by the Riverwalk Center that would hold anywhere from two to 300 people and it could be used for multi purposes? Uh, we, ha we had some healthy debates, <laughs> to say the <laughs> least. Um, and you know, at the end of the day, um, the one option of knocking it down and rebuilding it there just didn't make any sense. First of all, it wouldn't fit. There would not be a flex theater there that would fit in that footprint. Um, and you know, I think many of us were intrigued by the new flex theater by the Riverwalk Center, but there was a price tag of maybe nine to ten million dollars. Um, and that because we would have to include the renovation of the lobby. That's the only way to make that flex theater work, and that's three and a half million. The new theater would have been six million. So after a long debate, you know, the majority of council decided that you know, we're, we're pretty happy. The backstage theater has been here 40 years in this community. Uh, you know, I think all the citizens that, that live here certainly know the backstage theater. The guests that come here, they had over 10,000 visitors last year. So we made the decision to put an additional $600,000 into the budget that we've already had there, which brings it up to 1.9. And that's important, I think, for the citizens to know. The 1.3 has already been earmarked. That's already been put aside, so we're not taking that out of anything. 600000 is coming from this year's uh, capital improvement projects. Uh, so they're going to embark on that project. And I think we made it pretty clear that that's kind of, I think the council feels like that's the high limit. Uh, there's not going to be any more dollars that, I, that this council is going to feel comfortable about spending there. But they are very appreciative. Uh, we're hoping for another 40 years. I personally think that it's very, very important to have a, a small town theater company. Um, and so I, I, I think once that is renovated, the experience is going to be pretty, pretty significant. Mm -hmm. And the advantage is it keeps that kind of a, a stronghold in the arts district, that it really is an anchor tenant, if you will, on that end of, of the arts district and the Riverwalk Center being the other anchor. So I, I feel good about it. But it was, it was a healthy debate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That debate kind of pointed out a couple of advantages to having a new place. Mm -hmm. Flexibility, I think, was one word. You sure. may want to explain what that means. And then secondly was exactly that idea of the anchor, the, the presence on Ridge Street, and it, it is what it is, but it may be the only thing you can do in there. Right, right. Well, the proposed plan, it, it would have shared the lobby and the bathrooms and things like that, but it would have put a lot of pressure to that, that part of town, which I think ultimately was, was one of the reasons why, you know, let's, let's spread out Breckenridge and keep it, keep it special. And uh, this new renovation, I think, will be beautiful, too. I've seen the plans, and the lobby is much larger. There'll be really comfortable seats. Um, it allows for about 37 more seats and more flexibility in the way that there's more wing, <laughs> wingspan, <laughs> if you will, for the, for, the, um, for the set to move off so we can have other events there as well. Um, now the... The bar will be very separate from the tickets, and so you won't be, you know, crowded in that one little area. But we can spread out, and there are these garage doors that open up in the summer, and so, 
you can you can see the arts district and it'll be welcoming people in. So I'm, so I'm very that, excited. That's about the it. plan yeah. now. That, that's the plan that, now, that's, at least. That's, so that's right. We'll, we'll <laughs> We're going to move before. forward with that one. Um, wildfire mitigation. Uh, we have yes. to talk about it because it's coming up very fast. Yes. Uh, the council has, has set a high priority to to really mm -hmm. push that program hard, and in particular. We have a few areas of town that really haven't done too much. That's right. <laughs> well, currently, and I have my notes here because there's a lot going on with this. Uh, we are offering, or not, well, we, the, the people who are working on it, Dan Schroeder and his team, Steve Reed, um, on free consultations. And what will happen is, is that you, you can gather and, and we'll chip for free, but also there's, there's some incentives. So we're, they're offering $10 per tree with a $200 minimum to mitigate, to, to mitigate fire and for, for the old dead trees and, and just to create the defensible space um, so that our neighborhoods are safe and, and we'll hopefully worry a little bit less about it. And we'll have people coming through, through the town to help clean up um, everything that you, you can tear down and, and take off your land as far as brush and, and things like that. And there's a lot more information on townofbreckenridge.com. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Mark, a uh, big education program, but it is, it, it's a target, but it's also available to the whole community, right? It is going to be available to the whole community, but there are areas in our town and, and you know, Weisshorn, for instance, is one that just needs a lot of mitigation. And, mm -hmm. you know, we, we as a council decided that we wanted this to be out in front of them. And so uh, there's going to be a lot of education. We're not sure exactly. I think there's going to be mailings that will be done. There will be signage put in the neighborhoods when the chipping trucks are going to come I mean, through, knocking on doors. Knocking on doors. <laughs> um, but this is serious. I mean, you know, you're only as good as your neighbors are as far as fire mitigation. And, and just to reiterate, you know, what Aaron's saying, that we are incentivizing people. We'll pay $10 per tree. And at first we thought, well, that's not much. But I think it's about $30 a tree to take it down. So the town's offering one third, and it's a maximum 200, I believe, mm -hmm. per household. Because right. we want to make sure we can hit as many houses as we can. Um, but, you know, I, I really, you know, I'm asking all the citizens to take this serious because we have examples of fire that have ha fires that have happened in this state where there have been communities and, and, you know, homeowners associations that have really done fire mitigation and they have gone unscathed. We're right neighboring them. I think it was in the Colorado Springs area. That's correct. Right neighboring uh, the houses were totally gone. So you're only as good as your neighbors. But so it, it is it is a project that we've been talking about. And you know, this town has spent a lot of money. I mean, there's people that don't think we have spent enough money, but we've spent a lot of money on cutting down trees, on first treating trees. I remember years ago when the pine beetle came out, the town had money to spray. And so, but now we need to clean up. The chippers are gonna be there. It just means you have to do a little bit of work on your own and that's to get the debris out of your yard and out to the road so they can be chipped. Right now, defensible space is voluntary. Is this no. the last time it's gonna be voluntary? <laughs> Oh, I don't. Oh. <laughs> I'm new. No. Oh, okay. I, I'll tell you the previous. But, we had a previous council who yeah. did it, and it didn't go over well, making it mandatory. But but everybody but, said give everybody but, a chance. But give everybody yeah. a chance. Right. And right. and if people, we're making it as easy as possible. Yeah. Literally coming to your door. So now's now's the chance, and before it is it mm -hmm. is mandatory, and we're not paying for it. So. Yeah, yeah, I would say take a look at it. I hope peer pressure yeah. works. Yeah. 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 Well, and we ought to give kudos to the neighborhoods that have done a great oh. job. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a number, Highlands, Shock right. Hill, that took, took a role and, and, and agreed to do what they were going to do. So yeah. both good news, but also more work to be done. Uh, Tim, if I could, th there are parts in the country. People feel like the town, like, for instance, Peak 7, that, that's really county. So we have no jurisdiction over that. But, you know, those citizens need to get on board, too, because that's one of the areas that we were told in a report that's really at high risk. And that puts all of us at risk. So I'm, I'm hoping the county joins with us on efforts, and I think they are. I think well, the county's particularly getting, the chipping the, program. The chipping right. program. The county mm -hmm. is, is joining us. So uh, that that's important for everybody to know. Right, because it doesn't stop at the town border. No, it doesn't. Exactly right. Uh, let's talk about a couple of current projects because I'm sure you always get questions about those, and you, you love to let people know what's going on. We have two, or actually three, uh, uh, that are underway. One is Main Street Park. Mm -hmm. and then our skateboard park, and then the turf field. That's right. What's all happening with those now? Well, uh, the skateboard park is starting this summer, and it's going from, well, 13,000 to 19,000 squ square feet. And we're working with Team Payne, who will be coming in this summer. And as you, as you can tell, if you've gone by the rec center, 
there isn't a skate park there anymore. And that's not, we didn't get rid of it at all. <laughs> we are just, just replacing it. With, exactly, exactly. Well, we heard one citizen say that. So uh, we are, it's, it's going to be bigger and, and better. I don't, I don't skate, but it, it looks beautiful. And it'll be used by young and inexperienced to um, more advanced skaters and I, I'm looking forward to it, and that should that should start. Well, it's already started, right. but hopefully it'll finish up by the end of the summer. Right. The uh, Main Street Park. Main Street Park. It's um, for those of you who don't know, it's it's right between the Locals Market and Alpine Bank. Mm -hmm. The town acquired that property about a year ago, a year and a half ago, uh, and we're going to put a, a, a real nice park just for people to get a respite kind of on their walking. There's going to be benches. There's going to be uh, play area but with natural features so it's not going to be a playground it's going to be natural features there's going to be a, a, a great piece of art that's actually been donated by Mike and Anna Dudick uh, personally they donated that piece of art so that will be there uh, it's just going to be a great park on our main street adding some green space break between buildings um, you know and it, it, we're, we're anticipating down the road probably uh, con well it will be connected I guess to the Carter Museum right. mm -hmm. so people will be able to walk on Main Street right up to the Carter Museum which right now is very difficult to get to so that's a historic property for the town that will be probably more utilized we're looking at down the road probably within the next year and a half putting a, a bathroom at the Carter Museum area uh, so that's one of the budget things we looked at at the retreat uh, but yeah, we haven't seen the plan yet that will be in October uh, so it's it's going to be really a significant uh, property, and I think you know we spent you know I think our budget is two hundred fifty to three hundred thousand dollars on that park. So it's going to be really something significant, something that all of us can be proud of in this town. And it's starting and and finishing this summer. The, it will be done. It will be done by the fall. Right. Correct. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah. Exactly. And and from what I understand, will not impact traffic at all from where they are going to be. I mean, there could be some blockage on one side when they do it, but most of it is going to be because we have that whole property now for us. Maybe the alley behind, I think they might be using some or? Uh, probably not. No, probably not. No, right. Other than connecting the sidewalk up from up to Carter. Right. The turf field? The turf field is being put in, um, and it, I think it'll be a great amenity because lacrosse won't have to start practicing, what, in, in June mm, that's anymore? Right. So, right. so they'll be able to be out there sooner and, and out of the gym and um, yeah, I, I think it'll be great and, and a moving forward undertaking. <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of projects uh, going on. Uh, a couple other things that uh, the council had to deal with. Uh, it, it, it seems to be a, uh, I, I don't want to call it, uh, just a, a recurring problem oh. with telecommunications <laughs> oh. Oh, yeah, yeah. and and where uh, wireless antennas need to go and we interestingly have two of them pushed in front of us this this last month there is and and you know that is a complaint since I've been on the concert we've gotten from citizens and guests alike about the reception when we are at peak season and so Verizon has come to us and wanted an agreement they're looking to put an antenna at the red white and blue what is the station called right across from the Tiger North, Road, the North North uh, North Station, North Station. So they want to put there, and they're actually going to be putting it into the uh, cupola, is cupola, it cupola, cupola, cupola. And uh, you know they're going to be extending that. But it, if you look at the drawings, it virtually looks the same. Actually, I think it kind of looks a little bit nicer. Um, and then they're going to be putting one at the uh, baseball field by the rec center. Now, interestingly enough, you know, just a few short years ago, all, when you thought about these antennas, you think about these big towers that have these antennas. They are now putting them into small pipes. For instance, the one at the uh, rec center ball field is going to be in the net pipe that holds the nets for the back backstop, I guess. Right. It will be a little bit larger, wider, but it's physically going to be in that pipe. It's going to go up higher, maybe 20 some odd feet, 23 feet mm -hmm. higher. Uh, but it is going to be really well concealed. It, it's amazing to me what has happened, uh, you know, with the technology. Now the council did debate, you know, where do, where does it stop? Where does it come? So. We're keeping a close eye on it. It's not something that we want to do all the time. We also understand the real needs of a resort community. When we, when we are at capacity in the winter months, I mean, I'm sure everyone here knows that the cell, you know, reception is, is not good. So and it's we, a safety concern. Too. That's right. right. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people don't have home phones anymore. Right. And so that is their 911 phone plus, outlet. Plus the data seems to be the big the data, thing that's driving. Right. Yeah. 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 There was a frustration level, though, about how can we plan these things better? Yeah. Right. It's... 
It's tough because we're so reliant on the other cell phone companies, AT&T, Verizon. We can't plan it for them, and we can't predict the pockets where, that they might have. And uh, we, did, we did have a discussion about that, and, and where does it end, and, and how can we predict? Um, but it's an we interesting can. topic. But yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's important. Yeah. Everybody uses yeah. their cell phones. And, and I, I think clearly the council would like to avoid kind of the temporary thing, which was very, very nuisance-oriented when we did one of those a few years ago. I, I was on the council when we did that, and it was in the mm -hmm. parking lot of the old CM. At that time, it might have even been the CMC it building. It was, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and we had neighbors that, you know, the sound. Now, again, very different tower. It was a temporary tower, so it was loud. And, but regardless, it was, it was a nuisance, and I don't think we ever want to go back there. So we're, we're not interested in doing temporary solutions. This is a permanent solution for those pocket areas for Verizon. We're expecting to hear from some of the others, but if they can be as creative as Verizon was with these two sites and how they did it, uh, I think you know, they'll probably get a positive response from us right. as well. Plus there's room for other things on the antennas, as, that's right, as we understand, that's right. at least for a little bit of co-location. And, and Tim, our citizens should know too that you know we were able to get a few things out of it. We were getting a lease payment per that's month right. out of it. And we had a real issue with, I think, the trash dumpster at the rec center that we would have had to spend, I think, $50,000. Yeah. They're going to do that for us as well. So you know we made sure we did due diligence to make sure that the contract was in the best interest of our citizens uh, and for our community. Right. Um, kind of a funny topic, but one that uh, the, the council took a position on, which mm -hmm. is related to another town. Kind of unusual. That's right. Uh, Blue River has, has a issue in front of them called an annexation, mm -hmm. and there was, uh, I'll let you explain it, but it's about okay. what we call the jump. <laughs> <laughs> well, I might ask you to jump in, jump in. Uh, um, so in the 1990s, yeah, we decided to have an annexation with Blue River, the county, and Breckenridge to make sure that we don't overpopulate, that we don't overdevelop. And so we set aside some, some guidelines um, together to make sure that that doesn't happen. Now, um, there has been an applicant with something called Ruby Placer, and it's a development that will have um, more, more units than than would be within the annexation that was agreed upon. Um, 48 units and between the county and Breckenridge, we've decided that it's about 23 units above what was decided in the annexation. Um, so we wrote Blue River a letter just requesting that that the plans change a bit to accommodate. Is right. that yep, how, how that's I do? That's pretty close. <laughs> I'm going to let Mark embellish a little bit. What is JUMP? Yeah, it's the Joint Upper <laughs> Blue Master Plan. Okay, and okay. it was okay. done, as Aaron said, years ago. But as recent as when I was first in the council, I think 2010, as recent as that, we, had a, we reviewed it again. We all signed off on all the communities. And it's ex exactly what Aaron's talking about. It's so that we don't overpopulate our town and we can't meet the needs of our community with the infrastructure. Now, we made very clear at the council that we don't want to intrude on... Uh, Blue Rivers, you know, sovereignty. They are a community on their own. But we also felt it was important that they know that we're concerned about it, that we don't think it meets the standards of the agreement that they signed. Um, I know we, we had a big give, at least when I was on the council, it was a big debate about uh, affordable workforce housing. And, and we gave, I think it was one to four SFEs, and we decided to give up some of our SFEs out of our bank even if we were doing affordable workforce housing. So, you know, we've given, we just want to make sure that, that Blue River holds their end of the bargain as well. And I know the county was concerned. Uh, that was actually county land at one time, and that's, that's the real debate. It still is, right. Mm -hmm. and, and so it's county land, and, and there was an, a, an agreement that was, I'm not going to get into the details, but there was an agreement years ago. So the developer is, is holding his hat on, I think, an agreement that was there or something that was stated in, in some document. Uh, but it very clearly, at least when we look at it, uh, as Aaron said, it, 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 it's going to be overpopulated compared to what we agree and the county. Right. And, and it's not a question of not allowing right. the additional density. It's really where you get it from. Right. Right. The, the, the TDR program, which means that somebody has to pay for something. That's right. And this isn't workforce housing, right. as far as I understand. No, that's right. 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 It's all market housing. Right. 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 You, you know, Tim, and that, that's a great point. It's, it's not about that. They can do that. Mm -hmm. Now, there is a concern that they're spreading development out quite a bit, so it is going to the backcountry, which is one of the things that we didn't want to see happen. But they can buy the density. This development agreement can buy, as a matter of fact, we talk, you, Aaron talked about Triumph, you know, the property at the Breckenridge Mountain Lodge. They're going to be buying 25 SFEs from our bank right. to a tune of like $1.3 million. 
Uh, so that's a, a smaller development. You know, well, it's a different development. Right. It's a hotel development. But very clearly, our council said, no way. Unless you buy those SFEs, we're not going to approve it. We could have done that too, but we didn't do that. So that, that's the real rub, I think. Uh, and we'll see what, what Blue River does. You know, I think we're sending a letter from our, our town sharing concerns in the comments. But at the end of the day, it will be Blue River's decision, and uh, we'll see what, what they do. What that comes out with. Good. So the overall intent, uh, there's so everybody's clear, was to, to either reduce, but clearly not increase density right. within the valley. Right. And, right. And, and that was why the jump was developed originally. So very important document. It's kind of watershed. Not many communities have that right. among right. themselves. But not a, can, not a requirement. It's, it's, it's you live by it by the spirit of the thing at the end of the day. Gentlemen and ladies agreement. That's correct. That's, That's right. correct. Uh, I'm going to jump back a little bit. Uh, we spent a little bit of time talking about uh, what we call the parking. Uh, but we also had a parking report. Mm -hmm. which is the annual thing. The police department comes back in, uh, Chief Haynes, and kind of summarizes how things went in town during mm -hmm. the winter months uh, with our uh, parking program, the permits, everything else like that. Um, Mark, your impression of some of the highlights coming out of the, uh, the year that kind of led into yeah. all the other things we talked yeah. about at the retreat? You know, I think as we talked about when, we, when Aaron and I just spoke a little bit about the parking garage, you know, th there's a mindset in this community. And, uh, you know, the survey showed that, you know, although we have uh, lots all over the town that there, there is a perception of a problem, you know, interestingly enough, the ice rink uh, was one of the most used lots we have. But now that's our lot where people can use at night, overnight. They pay. And I, I think it brought in like $40,000 worth of revenue. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's one of the areas that we're looking to actually add on surface parking spaces. Um, but, you know, as we mentioned before, you know, the, the locals just have this perception of wanting not to pay for parking. They want to have the prime spots. Um, and it, it, was a, it, it wasn't a surprise to me. We've been talking about this issue, Tim, since I've been on the council. At some point, I think, you know, we're going to have to, you know, suck it up and probably make some real tough decisions that's going to make some people unhappy. But at the end of the day, might make it a better place to live and work in this town. I'm not sure we're going to change people's attitudes about getting on a bus. Um, in fact, I even think the survey, correct me if I'm wrong, the survey showed that even if we had an outlying parking space, majority of the locals would not get on that bus and come to work. <laughs> right. I mean, they still wanted to park where they are. Yeah, there seems to be a, uh, people have needs. Mm -hmm. Whether it's dropping off childcare, whether it's going to the store, whether it's, and transit doesn't give you that flexibility, it doesn't seem. No, and, and that's part of our culture. Um, and that number from Main Street, the amount of people who are on Main Street, 50% of the people who parked on Main Street were locals. And then I think I, I read another study afterward that it would, that cost about $300 a day for, for a business, business, for yeah. an average business. Yeah, so we need to be able to find that, that balance so that our businesses can thrive, but yet the people who, who are employees of the businesses are, are still happy that they can still, still be at work. Um, something else from the study that I noticed was that violations are down and that people, employees with those permits, weren't able to park all the time in, in those parking lots during the high, during the high times. High times. Mm -hmm. So the volume of parking, uh, particularly related to ski days, right. is a, it w was up this year. More yes. lots were full more often, mm -hmm. even, the, even their own lots. Right, right. Which drives then people having to find parking other yeah. places. And, and ironically, Tim, a few years back, the town changed the parking on Main Street in many of the spots from two hours to three hours at the urging of the Restaurant Association, which I'm a member, so I'm a restaurant owner, but it's now being abused. I mean, we, we have found that the three hour parking, or parking spaces are now being used by skiers, and they're self reporting in the survey. They're right. self reporting that they are coming there, they're parking there. And now the same restaurant owners, we've gotten several complaints where they, they're kind of mad because, you know, there's spot, spots in front of their restaurants. I don't know what the answer is, uh, but I think we're going to have to all probably come to some real conclusions that it, it may be paid parking. I'm not, I'm not, we have to disincentivize people from parking on Main Street so that it's there for our, our, our visitors. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I know that the locals also eat out at those restaurants and things, but we know where the other parking spaces are. 
I mean, you know, visitors, as you said, Tim, it may be information. They're just, they're not even aware of where it is. And that was the right. benefit of having a garage because it's all consolidated. People can look for a garage, they get there, they can park there. But until we get that parking structure, and if we get that parking structure, which is gonna cost a lot of money, we've gotta come up with some solutions to make it more accessible for our guests to be able to park in front of these businesses. And <coughs> Aaron's right, the study showed $300, I think on average, right. when that parking space is taken, a business that could have gotten into those businesses on Main Street. It sounds like this is an important dialogue for the business community. Yes. <laughs> Fortunately, I'm on the business services That's committee. That's right. <laughs> Go Breck. I wonder why so, I loved you that way. <laughs> so we do have a business <coughs> services committee um, as, as a function of Go Breck, <clears throat> and we'll be discussing that. We'll be discussing, you, you know, how, how can we help the business community and yet not alienate them at the same time. Right. Because it seems to be in their own self-interest to not have employees park. Of course, park. of course, yeah. Right, right. Yeah. When, you, when you look at dollars and cents. Uh, we've covered a lot of stuff. Uh, anything I missed that you'd like to highlight? Um, uh, maybe a little bit about Main Street construction? <coughs> yes. We have a, dro a drop, <laughs> hopefully this is taken well, a drop dead date of June 20th of, of when that will all be completed. Um, and also, with I, I did want to add that you can find a lot of these studies on townofbreckenridge.com mm -hmm. at under projects and issues. So for for all the statistics that we didn't quite hit here, um, it's good a point. great. Very I, good point. I spend a lot of time there. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's a good way to learn about the town. You know, Tim, that Main Street project. I know we're, we've gone on and on, but. You know, Aaron's right that we've been told by the contractor June 20th, you know, who, who really knows, but that's what we've been kind of guaranteed. Um, and, and we feel we feel for the local businesses, <clears throat> but this has been going on six years. We've been doing, I mean, this is a $6 million project that we've broken up over six years, probably even maybe a little bit more. Yeah, seven, um, I think, yeah. But I think anybody <clears throat> who looks at the parts of Main Street that have already been done are definitely an asset and a benefit to those business owners that live on Main Street. And so although we know it's a real inconvenience and when we understand it, it's one of those things where we have a very, very short window in this town to get a project done. Mm -hmm. And it's gonna be in the best interest. And my guess is we're not gonna do that kind of a project again for another 15 or 20 years. We better right, not. Right, and <laughs> that's important not. to say that yeah, it's, it's, that's right. we're seeing the end of the light. This but is we it. Do, we do hear the businesses and feel for them for sure. Yeah, right. I mean, in the old days, maybe not that long ago, uh, May and June were very slow. Yeah, and you hope to start in April, but uh, it seems like there's a little bit of a change there. I, I don't know. I haven't. We'll probably see sales tax numbers, and we'll get a little bit better right. idea. But well, and I would also like <clears> to <throat> encourage people who are visiting town or people who are already here. They're open. All those businesses are open, and you can access them. You can go around the construction. So please visit our local businesses. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, we suffer from a cone zone for two months I know. because right. that's our only time to get stuff done. And so. not just us. The state, CDOT, CDOT, uh, everybody. Nine, seems, yep. seems like the whole county's torn up. I know. That's right. Yeah. And and you can't get to Montezuma. <laughs> yeah. <Right>. Unfortunately, <laughs> boy, heart goes out to those folks up there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, those are great updates. Uh, anything else I missed before we wrap? I, I just hope the citizens come to our meeting because everything we do is public. <clears throat> we have a work session from 3 o'clock till 7.30. Every other Tuesday, the second and fourth Tuesday of the month, our meeting starts at 7.30. And if they're all open to the public, please come join us and, and uh, experience our meetings. And I would add to that that obviously, as Aaron said, we have everything on our website. At least we try to get it up there as quickly as possible. All these studies, the F-Lot uh, parking structure, the Breck Theater, uh, all of those studies, once they have been presented to council, end up on our website, uh, totally accessible. We tape our meetings, right. so you can actually listen to the meeting uh, it, through the internet if, if you wish to do that. If you want to listen to if, a, if you seven hours to, of... <laughs> uh, to that. So that, again, and obviously our council people are always accessible. Yeah. There's always the library, the grocery store. <laughs> City market, <laughs> City market, I see everybody. Uh, and, and obviously uh, the town hall is always available for folks that have questions. Uh, and we really encourage people to hopefully understand the topics. And we thank you two for helping do that today. And uh, Aaron, to your first Brick Buzz, great job. Thank you. And thanks yeah. to staff. And yeah. thank you to staff for, for a great retreat, too. There was oh. a lot of work on that. So Good. thanks. So uh, we are going to wrap for this month. And we'll see you again next month at the next Brick Buzz. Mm -hmm.